Ja, har vi fått tal. Say hi to Chaos Group. Thanks. It looks okay. Okay, we'll start. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Andre, and I work on Hell Software. And today I'm gonna today I'm gonna speak about the Viewer Blender, and mostly I will speak about in the in the meaning of development of what features from Blender I'm using, and uh, what's an API, and what's so cool about the API. But yeah, it's, it, the next slide is already up, so I want to introduce you to Hell Software. These are all the wonderful people doing Viri. Uh, and I also want to mention our founders, the Peter Midev and Vlado Khailazov. But so, let's go back to Viri for Blender. So I started this project as a personal project in 2008. Um, actually, as the most op open projects were started, it was, I was just needed a tool for myself. I was moving from, I was doing the architectural visualization myself, and once I thought that I want to move to Linux, because I was also a Linux enthusiast for uh, more than 12 years now, and I started to think that I could do all the CG workflow, or I could move all my workflow to, to Linux, and in that time it was the time after the first open movie, The Elephant's Dream, and it was a big bug bunny time, and Blender started to grow tremendously and I decided that it's really a cool tool to use for modeling. But still I was missing a good render because as you may know, architectural visualization is mostly about the global illumination. And luckily I found a screenshot on the internet uh, showing the command line and Vira window. And I was like, I was wondering what is that? And I've contacted the Chaos Group and it appears that they have a product called Vira Standalone which could read the scene description and render. So I was signed an NDA and I've started developing it. In a few days I have some working code. And then I, a few months later I realized that maybe not only me is looking for Vero for Blender and it was like maybe you remember in the IRC times that, that days like everybody was uh, like going to Blender channel and asking if they're a Vero for Blender. So I decided like maybe I could start sharing my development and I've published it on GitHub. And since then I started doing more features because uh, like different people need different features. And for example, some, some of them was doing animation. I wasn't using animation in my workflow at all. So I started implementing new stuff. And of course the major improvements were done uh, with the appearance of Blender 2.5. And last year I joined the Chaos Group. And so basically I want to speak about the development of the past year. Uh, uh, yeah, this is a slide of nostalgia. Maybe someone remember how experters were looking in Blender 2.4. And if Sebastian Koenig is here, it's, he's there. He was doing the first tutorials about the view of Blender. How many hours do, 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 have you done? Like videos, like about four hours, I don't remember. Like it was a huge tutorial about lighting. Thank you very much. And. Um, so, but now with Blender 
the export looks like that. So I'm utilizing the nodes and some more awesome features. So yeah, so what what I like about Blender 2.6 now it's 2.7, but anyway, like it, this, those features were released in Blender 2.6. So, of course, the UI, more improvements in UI. The lists, now we could resize lists, we could sort lists, we could search in lists. But the, the two main things that I enjoy a lot is Python nodes by Lucas Tone. I hope I pronounced his last name correctly. This is super awesome. Uh, API for creating nodes in Python, and of course, RNA API. So I want to speak about slightly in depth of how I'm doing nodes and why I'm doing nodes. Beside that, it's a very convenient way to see or how, you know, how your shading works or something like that. So V-Ray is a highly module system. For now, in Blender, even I have implemented more than 200 plugins. And since I have so much plugins, I need some kind of automation of how to generate those plugins. And uh, so what is, how this plugin looks in Blender? So it could be a node, it could, could, uh, it could be some property group on top of some other property group, like from an object or a uh, texture or something like that. So it should have a UI and maybe some UI on node also. And I'm using those node trees for all the aspects of uh, rendering configuration, so it's shaders, geometry, render channels, and some environment setup, effects. And so I came up with an idea of making the JSON descriptions of Vero plugins, and they are utilized for this generation and export, so how they look like. JSON plugin looks like that. No, it's not the exact JSON syntax, because I was thinking that it won't fit on a screen, but we have a wonderful screen here, and I, I was thinking that I could put some more code here. So this is the texture, the texture gamma, and it has an input parameter, texture. And so based on this description, I'm generating the node at runtime, and the same way I'm generating all the other nodes. So, whoops, I'm still not good with Mac. Anyway, so we have like a lot of nodes. So these are the texture nodes. There, some of them are textures themselves, so they do something, yeah? And some of them like color operations, color corrections, other some kind of utility texture that you could use to mix and just change gamma or something like that. And so for example, in in, uh, in this JSON example, we have those gamma node. So here is it. But I also have it on the next slide. So, from this description, I'm generating the node inputs. And there is also the widget. And from this widget, it's also a JSON description of, of what I want to draw on this node. So in this, for example, I want to draw the gamma attribute. And on the left side, we see the, how it could be look in Python. And on the right side, it's how it looks in JSON. And so this allows me to automatically generate all the interfaces. And for example, now, so this code is, both of this code leads to the same result, so I have a uh, node with gamma parameter and some input. Okay, next. So now we have all these nodes, they are connected to objects, properties, and now we need to export it. So Vero for Blender is an exporter, so we export scene from Blender into intermediate file format called VR scene. And that we are seeing is the then gets read by Vray and we are rendering. So what are the export of process and cons? So of course the first the, the cons are actually speed and disk space because we need to bake everything into into this VR scene file. But on the other hand, we have a lot of process. So for example, we could export once and render everywhere. Uh, and since this VR scene file contains everything that Vray needs for render. And if you have like limited resources on your computer, you could export the scene. And it's actually not only for Vray, it's like every render engine, every, any standalone render engine works. So you could export your scene from Blender, then close Blender and leave all the resources to final rendering. It also gets a lot of opportunities of manual scene edit. So if you are TD in the studio, you could maybe have some your own custom tools of combining those exported files. And uh, the thing that I call crash independence, it means that 
Uh, it means that the render engine is this hybrid process, and if render engine crashes, Blender still has all its data. If Blender crashes, render engine still finished a rendering, and you will have your uh, results. And so that's why I'm started using my custom build because of this cons, because I need to make export very fast and. I was started doing it also already in Blender 2.4, and my test shows there that like C++, C++ export is much like up to 20 times faster than the Python export. Uh, I've also mentioned here volumetrics export. No, this is because my export still utilizes some low-level C API to bake volumetrics data. But I guess since cycles now could render smoke simulations, we have some RNA API for that. So I. We'll look into it. And I'm also using some custom export related patches, like I have more events in uh, event handlers. Like I'm also doing the ab update checking because I, uh, I want to know that the object is changed during the animation and export only the data that actually changed. And I'm also utilizing some ID property patch to hold the node trees on the, in the property groups and it's very nice, and I hope it will be soon in master. Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, so how we actually export things. So what is RNA API? Actually, anyone who is using Python and Blender is actually using RNA API, and actually when you click on some button, you also use an RNA API. It's some kind of meta generator of, I don't know, this brilliant guys do this quite complex and powerful system. Uh, so we have RNA. And then we have Python and C++. So how it looks. So for example, uh, we have a pass index property on an object, which will represent the object ID on render. And so the, those index property from the SDNA will go to pass index property, and we define the name of the property, the description, and some update of how to handle it. And so it goes from ob index to object pass index in Python and object has index brackets in C++. And that's why it's very cool when, and I hope we will have uh, some kind of linking with this RNA API, and I hope we'll, we will have it quite soon. And so I actually want to show that if you use, used to use the Python API, it will be very easy for you to move to C++ RNA API because it's more fast and efficient. And so, for example, quite uh, hmm, slightly more complex example if we want to export uh, duplications. Duplications are actually not only dupli groups or dupli faces, dupli words, but also particles, particles with objects. And so this simple code will export you the uh, duplications. And so you, you could check that it's quite the same in Python and C++. So it's very easy to use. It's awesome. So. Now we know how to export. Let's slightly speak about what to export. So this is the sample of the VRC file. Uh, so it has a node type. In this example, yeah, it has some name and, and some properties. So we, as you can see, it's quite human readable. And for example, this pass index will go to this object ID property. Um, but we also were thinking about how to make those VRC files as much lightweight as possible. So we are supporting the hex format. For example, this transform hex, uh, the transformation matrix will be represented as some hex string and it will be very easy to load. And we also support compression in vector lists and float lists, so we export big meshes quite fine. And uh, so since we're exporting, I want to like slightly talk about the optimization of how we could opti optimize this exporting operations. Uh, because we, you could work on very big scenes, and uh, for example, you may want to combine the VR scene files after, so you could include one, one into another, and you could store some assets in the VR scene files and easily include them to the other files. We also use some technology called VR proxy. And I actually maybe will start showing it because I'm quite fast, but uh, anyway. So um, we could have a situation when we have a quite 
high poly mesh. So for example, this is the asteroid. It's about 900,000 faces. And maybe we want to render the asteroid field. Like maybe it will have more asteroids. So the idea is that you could bake the geometry into external file and then plug it back and it will be loaded only on render time. And then I hope everything will work. Yeah, so here we have about four thousands of these 800,000 ast asteroids. So I have no idea how much million of triangles are here, but it seems to work. Yeah, of course I'm using RNA API to export this particle system. I think you got the idea. And recently we were working with the Kiribati team on the Kiribati movie and I've introduced uh, a new plugin. I've developed it for, especially for Blender. And it works like that. So we have this quite simple scene, kernel box, like everybody knows. Uh, it has displacement, some fur, this proxy guy, and some animation, so yeah, animation goes. And so the idea was uh, we already exported to the VRSCN file. We, uh, we hold it as an asset, we treat it as an asset, and we want to load it to another scene. And so now we could actually do this. So in this scene, uh, we have the scene asset, and this object actually references this VRSCN file. And I could even remove those mesh and generate the preview of this file. And now, if I render, all the objects will be inserted in the render on render time, loaded from this viewer scene, and they are inserted very efficiently in the render pipeline, so all of this, all of those are instances and you could actually could have thousands of them without any problem. And the idea is that you could have that the viewer proxy just the geometry cache. In this case, you could cache the whole asset and insert it and do whatever you want with them. Of course, it supports animation, if we go here, we have some moving box, and uh, we could make some motion blur. And so, yeah, this this is the animation of the in, inside the. Oops, sorry. I need to switch the mode. Yeah. Yeah, I have a few uh, exporting modes for animation, just because we want to export as much efficient as as we want. So yeah, the, 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 this is animation, it's, it's stored in the VRSCN file and only inserted on, uh, on render, and this animation is from the top file, so you could animate your assets and inside the assets. Let me check what I have. Less. So yeah, uh, you rendered everything locally, it's fine, but what if you could, you should render uh, a lot more stuff in a short time, and the Render Street guys will help you. Marius, where are you? Yeah, Marius here. He's super cool. <laughs> and and so how it's used. Uh, I want to show you a few projects from this year. They are still not finished, so it will be some kind of secret teasers. I don't know. Uh, the first movie is Kiribati. It's the guys from Argentina. And I asked, asked them to make some uh, some short tour about the studio to show how they work because they are really in tight production and they simply have no time to go to Blender conference. But I still ask them to say hello to, to the wonderful audience, and I hope the sound will work. Hi folks, my name is Inesio Corrales. I'm here in San Luis, Argentina, working on an animated movie called Kiribati. I'm in charge of all lighting and rendering aspects as a director and supervisor. I'm going to show you like a little tour of our studio and basement. I hope you like it and thanks a lot for watching.
down. was a little small and fast tour in our set so I hope you like it and thanks a lot to, to Blender Foundation and Chaos Group to let us and give us all the support and development to make this possible. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Hello guys, could you please dim the lights here? And yeah, and I have one more video from Vanilla City, the studio from France. And but Olivier, Olivier, are you here? Olivier, yeah. Could you please read this because I I don't know how how because, because I, I think you know French, yeah? You try it after? No, no. I read it first, you no, try it after. Oh. It's Neuf Chemins des Gauchoirs. It's Neuf Chemins des Gauchoirs. Oh, very good. Small teaser. <laughs> it looks cool, though, you know? It's super cool. Okay, and, uh, and uh, the last video. Since the winter is coming, I hope everyone sees this video last year on Blender Nation, but anyway, I think it's very nice.
So it's basically that's it. Here are the links, but they are pretty easy to Google. Thanks, Andrew from Chaos Group. Ah, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, I want to thank Tom Rosendale and all the Blender developers for pushing the technology forward to making such a beautiful piece of software. Well, one thing in the demo was not clear to me, and you were comparing, like, said, well, this is the export page, right? So you save out the scene file, and then you send it to the render. Yes. Or you also have some kind of API like no. Octane did? No, it's completely uh, separated. I'm, uh, I'm exporting data to the VR scene file, and then I'm just calling the VR with parameters. So it's, huh. and, and the VR starts, do everything, and save the image somewhere else. So like the, the, the scene with the asteroids, you already had it exported then, right? Or was it, but it didn't have any time. You said it was a little bit speed problem. It, uh, yeah. You have to it, save out the file first and then you can render. I'm exporting, basically I'm exporting every time. Every time you press render, it exports the scene and then you oh. restart. But, uh, but the export then is very fast. Thanks. <laughs> I mean, That's I because of the RNA API, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, but I have said a few optimizations, like because actually the export of meshes is the most heavy operation. So you could actually export it once, and if you don't work with the geometry, you could untick one parameter, then not export the geometry, and it will export lights and materials and everything else, and it will speed up the workflow even more. But today, the, the small things that I showed now, it was exporting all the, uh, every time I press render. Time for one question, maybe, if that's an urgent question, or people can come downstairs. Yeah, if you have a question, uh, please, but uh, yeah. actually I'm here all the time, so you can find me, and okay. because I can probably, one question there. One really important question. Yeah. Uh, which version of VRA? It's VRA 3.0? Yes, or? it's, it's VRA 3.0, yeah. Okay, with OSL. Perfect. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. We're now having the presentation on Blender as mission preparation tool for drones. So stretch your legs, get some water, and but be right back. Don't run. Okay, so hi. I guess it should work. Uh, almost. Uh, but it's see, still booting. Well, it's, oh, it's rebooting. Sorry, I thought it was a background. For no, the no. First slide of the presentation. I, I don't try to put it on uh, on sleep. Okay. So. Oh, that was here. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, it's, uh, it's powered. Do we have a microphone? Or maybe two, one or two. 